Jurors are always riveted by the testimony of any defendant. It is the most dramatic evidence in a trial when it comes. Everybody's saying this videotape, this videotape, but these officers have a job to do, and in doing that job, they have to be given a certain amount of reasonable, and that's what this is, you know, reasonable force. They didn't know what they had. You take a man that's over 230 pounds and you put him on the ground and four officers go in to put handcuffs on him and he throws those officers off. The jurors were convinced that it was King who controlled the action, that he could have stopped the beating by surrendering. The officers, they felt, used reasonable force, with the possible exception of one. I believe Powell was out of control. That juror was one of four who voted to convict Powell of excessive use of force. The jury was made up of 10 whites, one Hispanic, and one Asian. Critics of the verdict are questioning whether this jury of their peers gave the white defendants an edge and whether King's race was a factor. I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Uh, if he had a statement to make, he should have gotten on the damn stand and said something and not been a coward and been unable to have the prosecution question him. He had a right to say one thing and one thing only, and that was he didn't want to testify. I think the judge expected him only to say that, and he shot his mouth off again. He hasn't seen his kids in, in a year. He's seen at least two. I will never see my son again how dare he throw that up for the world to hear and feel sorry for him he's where he is because he committed murder Mr. Uh, Simpson would you please stand and face the jury Mrs. Robertson Superior Court of California County of Los Angeles in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the State of California versus Orenthal James Simpson. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Ronald Lyle Goldman, a human being, as charged in count two of the information. We, the jury in the above entitled action, further find the special circumstance that the defendant, Orthal James Simpson, has in this case been convicted of at least one crime of murder of the first degree and one or more crimes of murder of the first or second degree to be not true. Signed this second day of October 1995, juror 230. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is this your verdict? So say you one, so say you all. This man is sick in a silent way that he has, his life has been threatened. And who does he choose to walk with? guards from the nation of Islam. He's talking about racism and he talks about hate. This man is the worst kind of human being imaginable. Who does he connect himself with? This man is a horror walking around amongst us and he compares what Mark Furman did to misery from the, the beginnings of history. He's a disgusting human being. You say that? That's the bitch I was talking about. 
Oh, I see. Break the roof. Oh. That's the bitch I was referring to who got me into this. Oh. Okay? This is the bitch I was referring to. Oh. He didn't stand up. I stood up for mine. I said I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it because he made me do it. Okay? He made the other two also do it. Okay? That's your client. The bitch. It's not a... Uh, it's not uh, something I would do all the time. If I did it, I did it in anger. I said, right. If you were angry at a woman, you'd say, you bitch, right? Yeah. But if a dude acts like a bitch, okay, like your client, the insult doubles. I then see. with a woman, there it is, uh -huh. who, who didn't stand up, who didn't say, look, I did this. Look, I am sorry. I did this. I'm going to, I'm going to, what he said was, I'm going to save myself after the murder. Uh -huh. You're defending this. Were you, were you hoping that Miss Adams died? I got a second degree murder charge. The rest of my life in prison. If she would have lived, I wouldn't have the rest of my life in prison. Sir, I could kill you with my hands. Okay, I could kill you with my hands. I don't need First, a gun. This is Mr. Watkins again. Answer okay, I didn't need a gun. Okay, I put I left the gun there in hopes that he would deter him from doing what he did. I didn't need a gun. Okay, to, for me to kill somebody, I don't need a gun. Can't you look and see? I'm 286 pounds. Okay, I would rip you like a rag doll. Okay? Is that what you're going to do to Sharika? I could have, but I didn't. Okay, I could have killed her, the baby. Okay, that wasn't my beef. I didn't kill my wife with the meat cleaver. I threatened her. Okay, I didn't hit Bridget with the crowbar. I threatened her. I was a dog barking. I didn't do nothing. I ran. After my wife did that to me, I left New York, packed up, took my tools, and said, I'm a good-looking man, I'll be able to get another woman. Left, went to Atlanta. I think that the Ramses were vilified more than anyone else in the last 10 years. The police in this case jumped on them right from the beginning. You had the mayor of Boulder coming out within two days of John Bonet's death, telling the people of Boulder on television they didn't need to worry about a killer being loose in their community. These police, they picked on the Ramses, and then when they got lawyers, the police used that as a reason, as if to suggest that made them guilty. And it just spiraled from there. Patsy Ramsey, they, the people said the Ramses didn't cooperate. The Ramses did cooperate. They no, gave they an unbelievable amount of consents for, people to, for the police to search their home for handwriting exemplars. And yet they were vilified from the very beginning with people who didn't know anything about the case, but all speculated that it must be the Ramses, because but who Bill else Bell could it have been? Well, Joe, for me, we talk about a rush to judgment. No, a rush to suspicion. Yeah, you get an umbrella of suspicion. The middle of the umbrella involves the family, the people surrounding, whether it's the, the Ramses, whether it's their son, whether it's anybody who had access to that house. What you usually get in reviewing, Gerald, and as you know, thousands of these cases, you do look to the family, not just to say, did they do it, but let's see if we can clear them so we can move on. This is a family that didn't, as I understand it from 10 years ago, as I remember, didn't want to take lie detector tests, didn't want to be interviewed except separately. We never, uh, together, we never interview parents together. Now, the point is, that doesn't mean they did it, but it does mean that there, in my mind, there are secrets in that house that we may never know. And if I were an investigator or I were the prosecutor, I would say this doesn't ring true to a poor child's family, a child who has been potentially molested, who has been murdered, what is up here? Then we had no clues of anyone else. Remember, somebody only came forward now, as was just said, that I think, let me get out of this jail in Thailand. Now, the truth is, whether this guy did it or not, what we know is we would have never had access to him, except that he seems to have come forward in some way. But again, this may not mean the Ramseys had anything to do with it, but they did not act, I think, in the best interest of their investigation, well, I, the best I, I interest of finding out who the child murdered.
No, no. Possible. It's crystal clear, Joe. They walked around through the crime scene. They failed to secure it. They fingered these parents from the very beginning, as they should, but to the exclusion of all others, which is what the big error was in this case. Usually, Geraldine and I disagree. Here, I'm in complete agreement. There's no question. If you look back at the facts of this case, as we've done on Court TV in exhaustive reviews of these last 10 years, there's no question that the Boulder police misstepped. The good news is that a new DA did come in, take a closer look at it, and hopefully this is the guy. But I think it's a shame that people even today are still attacking the Ramses. I mean, I think they're going to go down in American history with Wen Ho Lee, with Richard Jewell, as people who were falsely accused. They lived through a hell over the last 10 years, and poor Patsy passed away without ever seeing justice, having this cloud of suspicion over them. They never had any history of abusing their children. They had no motivation to kill John Benet Ramsey. She was killed with a sophisticated, sadistic garret around her neck and around her wrists. It all looked like a pedophile. This is a pretty little girl who was out in pageants with wealthy parents. Of course she's a target for a kidnapper or a pedophile. It wouldn't make any sense that they would have written that ransom note. I just think from the beginning the police botched it and it's time frankly for an apology to the Ramses. Okay, what's happening? Um, I have someone here that I need to um, be arrested in my home. There they are now. A possible missing child. I have a three-year-old that's been missing for a month. A three-year-old? Yes. Have you reported that? I'm trying to do that now, ma'am. Okay, how old is your daughter? Twenty-two. Okay, what's your name? My name? Her name. Her name, Casey Anthony. C-A-S-E-Y. And your name? Cynthia Anthony. Cynthia, can I get a phone number that I can reach you at? Um, 407-808-4731. Mm -hmm. And you said you have the vehicle back? Yes. And I have the um, statement. Casey's there right now? Yes, I got her. I finally found her after a month. She's been missing for a month. I found her, but we can't find my granddaughter. Good afternoon, Linda. You know, the jury came dressed up today. They had their suits and ties on. They had their blazers a little bit more dressed up than usual. So we all suspected they may be coming back with a verdict today. Ten hours, 44 minutes worth of deliberations. Not guilty on first-degree murder. Not guilty on aggravated child abuse. And not guilty on aggravated manslaughter of a child. I tell you, people's mouths are hanging open here. But as um, we watched the uh, crowd outside, uh, people, as the verdict was read, um, you know, they had mixed feelings about it. Uh, a lot of these people are coming down the sidewalk. You're hearing people on their phones. Uh, they're calling their friends, their families, their loved ones uh, to say that they were here when this verdict was read. Uh, some of them very angry. Some of them say they saw this coming, that the state just did not prove their case.